right guys so this is what i've figured out there are certain aspects of the whole situation that i can't fully understand but i can definitely identify what the problem is and the solution having that said do at your own risk this is the same type of wiring job i did i will give three examples of how to go about doing it because there's always more than one way to skin a drone i think is how the saying goes so here is the f3 flight controller give or take uh it might be a little different on yours or somebody else's that's not the important part here's some other schematics of a very similar one this isn't for the wizard per se this is just giving you a diagram to reference if need be it might be helpful it might not seems like it could be so what we got going on here is the three wires to the right on the bottom here is uh, we're dealing with the whole row of the situation we're looking on the right side the yellow red and black which is going to be going from your flight controller the yellow one and then it goes from your camera to your flight controller for the on-screen display and then to this power distribution board and then to the vtx it's all kind of networked together and it does that with the video the hot wire and the ground um, which in my opinion yet again i do not have a degree in this i've found that this configuration for the on-screen display creates a lot of video noise uh, there's probably other solutions that, um, that a million other people will tell you how to do that. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take these wires off. We're going to unsolder them. And the hot wire on the right side of the circuit here, it's either going to be 12 volts or 5 volts, depending on what type of camera that you have in the wizard and what model it is. Because I've ha I've seen some that the camera is running a 5 volt situation and then some that are running 12 volts. And then also, here's the fun part, you guys are going to love this. So with the stock flight controller, the wiring on the plug is backwards than if you got an aftermarket one and depending on what brand of vtx you get the plug itself could have more or less pins also most likely are not in the same configuration and what i did is i had the original vtx for the wizard has six channels going on here okay three all right six channels which goes your power in which is 7 to 24 volts or v bat your ground and ground 5 volt video and then data which most likely i guess is either on screen display or audio or both or something of the mix which somebody there's a million other people that will tell you about that part but you can use the same wiring harness from the original vtx keeping in mind and keeping track of where what wires are what because how i had to solder it up the color code on the aftermarket vtx going from top to bottom is black white yellow black red but the wizard stock color code would be red black black red yellow white there's a little bit of a difference if you want to keep going with the um the aftermarket if you want to continue to use the same plug that is already in it then you're going to want to remove the two video wires that are here and if your camera is 12 volts you can use hot in the ground on the right side of this channel to go to your to go to your camera and in fact what you most likely would want to do is if you have five volts for your camera you would want to tie in you would unsolder from the right side there and then you would solder on to the left you're going without on-screen display which is what the methods here that i'm providing is then you're going to want to get rid of these three wires that goes from your flight controller to the power distribution board because they're unnecessary then you can just wire from the the vtx to the camera straight from vbat on where the battery comes in or you can pick up 12 volts on the right side of this channel which is where 12 volt will be the 5 volt channel is going to be one more over and there's two pads and pins 
which are 5 volt and 12 volt depending on what one that you want to tie into and so that's an, that's an option right there to do it. Also VTX will send out 5 volts but I've found that the, the best way to hook it up for me personally without adding capacitors and, and whatnot and noise reducers is you would hook up the camera to your, if, you, if it was 5 volts, you'd hook up the hot side to your 5 volt pad and then your ground to the VBAT. And what that will do is because all of these other circuits, they use the ground to step down the voltage. So if you ended up hooking your ground up between like a 5 volt output and, and this 12 volt, you're going to get uh, feedback loops or the uh, ground feedback. And so what's going to happen is it most likely can burn your 5 volt channel out through the ground side or it's just instead of it being 5 volts, it will jump it up to 12 volts and you will plug in your camera thinking it's 5 volts and your camera will be like, I'm going for a smoke break, but I'm not coming back. Red flag about that. But the best way, like I said, to do it is take your ground at VBAT, 5 volts from the power distribution board. You can also hook in the the both of the grounds coming out of the VTX instead of having the ground go straight to the camera. If you hook that ground straight to your VBAT and then run a, a auxiliary wire, an extra wire, up to your camera. And then since there's a direct ground on both units there without it going through the voltage regulator step down on the power distribution board or flight control. There's no ground feedback and it ha they both have direct ground sources and electricity very similar to water in this regards is it will take the path of least resistance and it will leave you with a beautiful, beautiful crisp, clean picture. picture. Granted you've did your soldering right. Okay, and this right here was, this is option number two, is of course we disconnect all of the three wires because they are unnecessary in the circuit. And you just run a muck full throttle. Just make a beeline straight from your VTX to your camera with the proper voltage. Have that be 12 volt or 5 volts, and you have to take your camera off, open up the back, and take you know magnifying glass or however and make sure you can positively identify that the, the chip itself is going to say 5 or 12 volts if you got a multimeter you can test it if not you just want to identify it because there's some models like I said that have a 5 volts some have 12 volts with that bit of information um, I hope you know I hope that this works just fine I think it will so beans approved it's okay to do at home kids and adults and here's a couple other pictures that might be helpful I apologize for like just the crude and rude artwork uh, scribble dialing grams I mean I come on I made it in paint and I did it in like seven minutes and I have other stuff to do and I don't have any time for to put this you know extra cosmetics and make it fancy or whatever so so I hope this helps everybody especially mr. Crowley Hope that this information enlightens you to a full understanding of how the circuit works and explains to you how to fix it and also what, what went wrong and where it went wrong. If you need any other assistance, you definitely know how to get a hold of me and anybody else that's looking at this later on. You can leave a comment and I will assist you guys via through live chat if I have time, if it's appropriate and whatnot. Everybody, enjoy yourself. Get that quad going and go fly, fly, fly away. Come fame we with me. Go and get those batteries. Get them off the charger, let's go fly. Anytime, draw along. It's time to go fly. <laughs> if you fall, and if you break that shit in the ground, it's all good, man. Just pick it on up, put it on the bench, and say, fuck. Go fix your VTX. Go and fix that VTX. 
When you get your picture back You can brag to your friends You can say hey Brad or Chad I got my picture back <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy.